Hey folks, we've taken a little detour from our usual stop at Compassion Way here in Dodgeville at Upland Hills Health, and we've gone just east of downtown Dodgeville to Harris Park where we're at the Sip and Saver event. It is the biggest fundraiser of the year for Upland Hills Foundation, and we're gonna go talk in just a moment with Julie Ulrich, who is the foundation director, and she's gonna talk about how important this is. It's a really simple thing. All you gotta do is buy some tickets and you get to sample some great local food and beverages from the area while supporting a great cause. From Harris Park here in Dodgeville, I'm Justin Riley, and this is Wisconsin Doctors. Hey folks, welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We've taken a little trip from our usual place over in Upland Hills Health over on Compassion Way down to Harris Park here in Dodgeville and we are at Sip and Savor inside the big pavilion and I'm here with Julia Ulrich who is Foundation Director for Upland Hills Health. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Hi. Thanks for being here with yeah, us today. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about this event and what sorts of things we're going to see and experience today. Sure, yep. Sip and Savor, this is the second time we've had this event. It's a tasting event where we invite local vendors, restaurants, breweries and wineries to come out and sample some of the different foods and drinks that they offer. So it's welcome, it's open to the public and free to get in and then uh, people are able to buy samples. All the proceeds benefit the Upland Hills Health Foundation. Very good, very yes. good. And this is the second annual as I understand. Second event, yes. Yes. Have you noticed any difference in terms of like a community response or anything? Are people more excited about it this year? Yeah, you know I think with the first year being last year, um, People were still learning about the event sure. and, and figuring it out, and I think we've had a really good turnout this year. I think we've already exceeded the number of participants that we had right. last year, so um, we've heard great things from the people who've been attending the event today, and it seems like people are very excited, like the event. That's awesome, that's yeah. awesome. So what is the foundation's role in, Upland, in supporting Upland Hills Health? Sure, well the foundation basically supports all of the programs and services that are op offered at the hospital. So we do all of the fundraising for the organization and we promote different pieces of equipment, services and programs and help to provide the funding for that so that we can continually provide the best possible health care for the people in our community, which is really important because we want them to be able to stay close to home when they're receiving receiving the care that they need. It's so important to so many people is that they're they're somewhere where they're comfortable, somewhere familiar yes, when they're exactly. receiving that care. So and mm -hmm. it's right here in, in people's backyards. Which it is. is so awesome. It is. So uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the things that the foundation actually funds. You talked about fundraising. Talk to us about some of the things that you actually are fundraising for. Sure. Well, um, you know we we have a large a large scale of things that we fund. We sm fund very small items up to very large items. Some of the items that we've funded in the past are we've helped to provide the MRI imaging services that are, are at Upland Hills Health, 3D mammography that's at Upland Hills Health, and then things down, you know, down to treadmills and things like that that really help to just kind of um, bring the services to the patients right here close to home. Is, now, is this a pretty uh, typical example of a fundraiser that you would do, or is this kind of like the big mecca of fundraisers, so to speak? Yeah, this is our big fundraiser for the year. So okay. we do this one event, and then we have other smaller fundraising opportunities where we reach out more personally to our donors and to our communities. Um, but this is really just like our great welcoming people out and kind of letting them know who the foundation is and what we do in our community. That is so awesome, being a part of the community and being, being invested in the community. Yes, so. exactly. Well, Julia Ulrich, uh, Foundation Director for my, uh, Upland Hills Health, thank you so much yes. for joining us Absolutely. today. Absolutely, thank you. And we're going to head on over and talk with Tina White, Director of Marketing for Upland Hills Health, in just a moment, so stick around. And we're here with Tina White, who is the Director of Marketing for Upland Hills Health, at the, and we're here at the Sip and Savor event at Harris Park. Tina, welcome to the program. Thank you. You guys probably don't know this, but Tina is the one that is behind all of our shows here at Upland Hills Health. She does an awesome job, but we don't get to see her on this side of the camera right, too often, so right. I'm so glad you're able to make yeah, it here today. Yeah, thank you. I'm so glad that you guys came today, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some things going on at Upland Hills Health? Give us a little bit of an update. You've got some exciting yeah. things coming down the pipeline. Absolutely. April and May are full of events for us, and uh, as you can tell, because of the Sip and right. Saver event, but I think that the biggest thing that's going on at Upland Hills Health right 
right now is the uh, the building project that we have going on. Yeah. We've been preparing this for the last couple of years and now it's finally happening, so we're all really excited. We've been going through the enabling phase and moving things around and shifting clinics and we're basically getting ready to build a new hospital. That is exciting. Yeah. That is yeah. so very exciting to yeah. hear that. Because we, we've been here, coming here for a few years now, and yeah. you guys do such an awesome job here. Yeah. It's just good to hear that you guys are ex kind of expanding in that direction. Yes, we are. So, you know, talking about building projects, you know, some people might have the perception that hospitals are constantly building. Yeah. In reality, I mean, how often does a hospital, whether it's rural or urban, kind of take on these, these building projects? Well, actually, um, they probably are building all yeah. the time because as, as as it is when you're taking care of your own home, there's right. always something that needs to be renovated, something that needs to be fixed up. And with a campus the size of ours, um, there's always services that need to be added to address the community needs. And um, so we are always uh, renovating, always building something. And so like in 2002, we built a new nursing home. And in 2009, we built a dialysis center and it was all to meet the needs of our community. And um, so now, this building project really have, doesn't have anything to do with those uh, items or those building areas, right. but our um, our hospital is reaching its maximum age, yes. so it's time to address that and build a new hospital. So this is our existing hospital, and we're going to build a new hospital right in the center of our campus. Oh wow! Yeah, and so it's going to make and it, it'll actually join with this and be right in this area. Wow, very yeah. cool. Very so cool. We're, we're not moving to a new location. We're going right. to build right where we are, but yeah. make everything much more convenient. And you've done a lot of building out in the past, so now you're building up, Yeah, which is yeah. kind of cool. We're going to try to bring it all back into the center a little bit more. So there were three things that you wanted to highlight uh, that this uh, building project is addressing. What are those three yes. things? Yes, okay. So the first thing that we need to address is um, our surgical suites. Surgeries today, um, if they were built today, they're actually twice the size of the surgeries that we have now. Okay. And so we're going to be building uh, new surgical suites, things will, and um, outfitting them so that we can use the digital technology that's uh, being used today. So we're excited about that. And then also, um, with building a new hospital, we'll be improving our patient rooms, also outfitting them with the latest technology, and then also uh, building new birthing suites, and um, the, the, the expectations for uh, birthing suites nowadays is uh, changing. Right. People are inviting their families in right. you know, to make those a really unforgettable right. uh, birthing experience. And we want to make sure that everybody knows that um, you can receive exceptional um, obstetric care at, in right. Dodgeville. You don't have to drive to Madison. And um, the, the other thing that we'll be addressing is now the standard of care is to have a C-section suite on the same floor okay. with the birthing unit, and so we'll be able to address that. And then by bringing everything to the middle of the campus, wayfinding is going to be so much easier. Yes. And everything will be so much easier to get to. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, before we go real quick, yeah. doesn't this event just get you really excited? It really I does. I mean, this is the second year that you've done this event, and it, yeah. I think this is a great turnout. I mean, every table is full. Yeah. It's growing. It's growing. I think that by, by 5.30, we um, had the same number of people who attended last year. Oh wow! Yeah, so With an hour so, and a half to go. Yes, yeah, so it's still really growing, and the smell makes you really hungry. Yes, it certainly does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it a, it's does. a fun time. Tina White, thank you so much for thank joining you. with us thank today. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to talk with some other folks here, and maybe even try a little bit of food that they have to offer. Listen yeah. to some music and just have a good time here in Wisconsin, doctors. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Folks, we're here with Jody Vanderloo, who is chair of the Board of Trustees for Upland Hills Health. Jody, thank you for coming on the program today. We thank appreciate you for it. having me. So, um, I want to first of all, uh, for our viewers out there, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the role of the Board of Trustees? What their role is with Upland Hills Health? Uh, the Board of Trustees meets monthly, and we deal with the strategic planning, the vision, the innovation of the hospital. And we kind of take that 30,000 foot view so that we don't micromanage. We um, deal with quality, um, just a variety of aspects and the little opportunities or obstacles 
that present themselves. Opportunities and obstacles. Yes. So you're kind of keeping a bird's eye view. You're kind of interested in big picture things and yes. not specific necessarily. Let's try to make sure that every detail is perfect with this thing. You kind Correct. of leave that up to other folks. You bet. We feel very confident in the leadership that we have and uh, we trust yeah. the, the leaders, uh, the administrative team. They report back to us uh, monthly sure. or quarterly and we feel that they give us good direction. Sure, sure, that's good to know. And uh, what are some of the projects that you talked about here? Uh, you, uh, what are some of the projects that the Board of Trustees, both past, present, and future, are working on with uh, the hospital and with uh, Upland Hills Health? Well, besides improving the general structure of the hospital itself, we have, we're trying to move the presence of the hospital out into the various communities. We've built a new clinic in Highland, in Montfort. Uh, we've reestablished a clinic in Spring Green. We're building a physical therapy wellness center with a therapy pool in Mineral Point. And we're working with the county to see if we can develop a long range plan dealing with elder care in the county. Very nice. We've got just about a minute left, uh, Jody, but uh, can you tell us what do you think an event like this, the Sip and Saver event, means for uh, Upland Hills Health or a, a rural hospital like this one? It gives Upland Hills Health an opportunity to talk more about its projects, to create a fun atmosphere, bring people together of all ages and backgrounds so that they can possibly learn about Upland Hills Health and what we have to offer. That's so awesome. You guys have so many awesome services here and you really care about, you're we very do. much invested in the community, which is we great. Are. So, we are. So, Jody Vanderman, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. We're at the Sip and Savor event here at Upland Hills Health. We're actually at Harris Park here in Dodgeville. And stick around because there is more to come when we come back. Hey folks, we're here at the Sip and Savor event that's at Harris Park. This is the second annual part of Upland Hills Health Foundation fundraiser. And I'm here with board member, or foundation board member and treasurer, Mark Masters. How are you, Mark? I'm great. Thanks for coming on the program today. Thanks for being on Wisconsin Thank Doctors. You. So you've been involved with both the board of trustees and with the foundation for a number of years. Now, how long has it been? It's been a roughly 30 years, off and on. I was on the uh, the main board, the trustee board, for 12 years. I had a time off, and then I've been on the foundation board for 10 years. And have done a lot to support the hospital in different ways, whether it was on a board or not. And that's so important and so crucial for a hospital like uh, like Upland Hills, for sure. Why is it important for folks like yourselves to uh, to, to be involved in a rural hospital like Upland Hills, whether it's through volunteer work or being a part of the foundation, why is that so important? Well, the community hospital in a rural area is one of the centerpiece um, components of a very healthy community, along with the schools and the recreation, parks, so on. It, it ties the community together, but it's also a major service to uh, people of all ages, young and old, and emergency situations, routine health care, and the specialist care that we get now that's at the rural area hospital level. It's hugely important to a smaller community. Yeah, and it's important for people to have access to good quality health care, and as you mentioned, education, the schools are an important part of that as well, mm -hmm. so so very good. Now, are there folks that are, if there are folks who are watching at home who might be interested in getting involved with what the foundation is doing and how they support the hospital, is that something where they have to become a board member or a member of the foundation, or can they just be a volunteer? There's many, many volunteers. Being a board member is not a requirement. I think there's over 100 volunteers, including the board members, that help support the functions of the hospital and, and provide the community service. Uh, what you see here tonight is mainly put together and sponsored by community and community volunteers. So, it's very cool. A lot of volunteers here. It's awesome. They all kind of come together for a common purpose, which is exactly. which is awesome. Yeah. So we've got about a minute left here. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Mark. You've been in this uh, in this uh, business, so to speak, for a long time. What's been the most rewarding thing that you've seen happen here since you've been part of the Board of Trustees or for the Foundation? Well, I go back to my early days. Uh, became a board member on the main trustee board, and the hospital was in severe financial strain, restraints at that time, and constraints, and uh, basically the hospital has grown to a magnificent uh, 
it's grown a lot. Yeah. It's 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 really kind of expanded and really become kind of a kind of the heart of, uh, of healthcare here in southwestern Wisconsin. I think the the healthcare that is provided from this hospital is class one oh, throughout. Yeah. It's. Uh, a hugely successful program. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And you were you helped that. Well, I hope so. That. Yeah. <laughs> Continue to do so if I can. There you go. Yeah. Mark Masters, thank you so much for joining us. Mark thank Masters you. is a, a board member for the foundation and treasurer as well. Don't go away. There's more here at the Sip and Saver event at Upland Hills Health. I'm standing next to Dr. Aaron Dunn, who is on the, uh, who's a family physician on the medical staff here at Upland Hills Health, and we're at the Sip and Saver event here at Harris Park. How are you, Dr. Dunn? I'm great. Good to have you back. It's Th been a while. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of in a different set of circumstances here too. So yeah. We're hearing some of your relaxed. music, and yeah, and it's it's been great. So tell us a little bit about your role here at Upland Hills Health, because you're not technically an employee of Upland Hills. Correct. So uh, I'm a family physician. I work with the SSM Dean Medical Group. Okay. Uh, we have clinics in Dodgeville, uh, Barneveld, and then I'm in the site of Mineral Point. Okay. But we all are on the medical staff at Upland Hills. We take care of patients at Upland Hills Health. It is our home hospital. So okay. I've been here for over 12 years. Okay. So this is home for you. Exactly. That's awesome. Now, you guys just won an award. Can you tell us a little bit about that award? Yeah. So uh, Upland Hills got awarded by CMS a five-star rating for quality. Uh, which puts them in the top 7% of all hospitals in the entire country. So uh, that takes you know, over, over 50 quality measures that we work hard on uh, in the hospital as far as taking care of patients. Uh, and uh, the rating is really special to us. I, ever since I've been here, I've known that this was a special place in terms of uh, a really high quality hospital with really great people. And just to have that affirmed you know, nationally with such a rating, um, is really an honor so it's uh, it's a great place to be that is awesome and uh, we've got a couple minutes here so I'm wondering if you can kind of describe a little bit about why you think uh, an event like this is so important to a hospital like Upland Hills well small town hospitals in rural areas are all about the community right so uh, every decision the hospital makes has the community in mind right so any kind of service they develop any kind of uh, charity they they fundraise, uh, any kind of event they hold has the community in mind. So to have a community oriented event, oriented event like this every year is just natural. So right. Upland Hills wants to be part of the community, um, wants to serve the community, and to have the community come and recognize that and share that with us, it's just a special thing. And that's so awesome. And uh, we, real quick before we go, I got to ask you this: Tell us a little bit about this band that you're involved in that we've been <laughs> hearing all day. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, they tell me not to quit my day job, but uh, <laughs> the, the other thing I do is uh, we're in a string band called Point Five, my wife and I, and we've been playing together for over 10 years uh, all around the county, sure. and uh, this is the second year we've played this event, and uh, it's just fun to be able to do something like that with your friends in the spare time, and uh, we have a great partnership with the hospital, so it's, yeah. uh, it's been fun. Do something right brain for a while, right? <laughs> right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Aaron Dunn, thank you so much for being with us here today. You bet. Don't go away, there is more right here at the Sip and Saver event, part of Upland Hills Health Foundation fundraiser right after this, so stick around. We've talked with a number of people who are involved directly with a hospital, the hospital I should say, or one of the different boards that supports the hospital, whether it's the foundation or the board of trustees. And now we actually get to talk with a community member and I'm joined now by Nancy Tubes. How are you, Nancy? Good. Thanks for being on the Wisconsin Doctors today. We really appreciate it. So give us a little bit of a background. I mean, you live in Dodgeville. How long have you been here? Um, I moved here in 1981 okay. when I started my job with the school district. Okay, and what did you do for the school district? I was a speech and language clinician. Okay, very good. And so you've kind of made, you started your family here, it sounds like. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, we have four children. And yep. Good place for the kids to grow up and everything? Yes, it was. That's awesome. And uh, so your job brought you here. What's kept you here? I mean, is there anything beyond just your job that's kept you here? Um, well, I, when we started raising our children, I'm from Madison, and I thought we would move close, closer to Madison when they started school. Right. And 
it never happened. It just never and happened. And we just kept going and have stayed. They've all grown up and moved out of town. And yeah. So. And you have no regrets, right? No. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, what does uh, how how has Upland Hills uh, been a part of? your guys' life as you've raised your kids here, as your kids have grown up. I mean, I'm sure it's been a big part of your life, but how exactly has Upland Hills been a, a big part of your life? Well, we've used the facility in many ways. Um, and from having procedures to having surgeries, and we use the fitness center, we walk the walking path, um, We've I've had therapy, physical therapy there. And, um, pretty much the gamut of services. And it kind of sounds to me like, you know, you don't necessarily need to be sick or have an ailment to use the hospital. Right, right. You can right. use the fitness center. You yep. can, anybody's welcome to come in there and walk the length of the building during the winter time when it's cold. And... Right, right. And even the skilled nursing facility, too. We've, I've sung, uh, gone over there and uh, led Bible studies and things like that. and enjoy talking to the people there so very good very good so let's uh we're going to kind of turn to the heart of the matter so to speak here what what does having a hospital like upland hills health here in a community like this mean to you and to the community um it's huge to us yeah. and especially as we're getting close to a, a milestone birthday right. and um, if we consider moving at all, we think, well, we want to have a great hospital like we have here. Right. And so it's definitely something that um, we would look for and want right. in a community. Yeah. You definitely have access to just the, the top health care here in the area. So that's, that's awesome. Absolutely. All right. Um, well, Nancy Tews, thank you so much for sure. joining us today. Appreciate that. Yeah. We are here at the Sip and Savor event here at Harris Park for Upland Hills Health. Don't go away, there's more to come. Well, that's our show here today for Wisconsin Doctors. We've been here at Harris Park just east of downtown Dodgeville at Sip and Savor, Upland Hills Foundation's largest fundraising event of the year. We've had a great chance to try some awesome food and great beverages as well. But now we're out of time. From all of us here at Wisconsin's 57 Television and Upland Hills Health, we invite you to live longer, live better. We'll see you next time. Okay guys, let's roll out.